No matter what your religious beliefs, it's clear this building is majestic. And the man behind it, architect and Valley native Greg Lambright. As a child, you can only imagine of working on a, an edifice, a, a house of God. I mean, nobody gets to do that. He wanted the temple to represent an oasis in the desert. So the agave plant was chosen as the artistic theme. You'll see plants everywhere, including the walls and stained glass outside, and the intricate gold and bronze work inside. The temple's interior incorporates colors from the plant, including soft blues and greens. Church leaders say the agave plant fits symbolically with teachings about families. The agave's older leaves create an impression on the upper or younger leaves, just as parents and ancestors act as examples for younger generations. And morning anchor Dan Spindle is back with us now with more on how the younger generations get involved in temple work. And uh, Dan, not too many people get up as early as you do, but certainly you found some people who do. Uh, that is true. We did find somebody. We talked to an East Valley teenager who she manages somehow to fit the temple into her very busy high school schedule. It's 3.30 on a crisp Arizona morning. And while most teenagers are still hours away from getting up, <laughs> The 3.30 wake-up call on Taylor Lambriger's phone reminds her she's got work to do before going to school. <laughs> Blurry-eyed, she heads out the door to a nearby church where she'll meet up with about two dozen other junior high and high school students, all sacrificing sleep. Please bless that we can try to take this experience and learn from it. Hoping for a spiritual experience inside the temple. We say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. By 4.30, this group of young women and their leaders head to the one area of the temple open to younger members of the church. Singing while they wait for the doors to open, Taylor and her friends head into the temple's baptistry. Inside, they'll see a font common to all LDS temples. It sits on the backs of 12 oxen, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. This is what the one inside the new Gilbert temple looks like. Mormons believe that baptism by someone with proper authority is essential for salvation, and so they perform baptisms by proxy for their ancestors who didn't have that opportunity during their lifetime. Critics accuse Mormons of baptizing people against their will, but church members believe those individuals can choose to accept or reject the baptism, and they do not add those people's names to the records of the church. But see, here they don't have the E on the end of it. Finding those ancestors motivates Taylor. It's really interesting and fun to learn. Learning her grandfather five generations back moved to Ohio from Switzerland, and that family line is now spread across the globe, makes getting up at 3.30 worth it. When you have family work that you've done and you've looked for and you've searched and you've worked hard to find, it's, it's there, it's the emotional connection. You grow to know those people and you can feel their spirit so much more strongly. I'm Dan Spindle, ABC 15 News. Mormons tell me the focus of the temple is to not only unite generations who have passed, but also help those who are still living now. I spoke with one Valley family who it helped during their darkest hour. Ever there's a picture, she'll stick one of Matthew in there. Pictures cover the walls of the Peters Gilbert home. He's hilarious. They chronicle Mike and Susie's story. More than 20 years of marriage. They were good friends. Four kids. That was the last picture that we got of the two boys. And the cancer that devastated their lives. Who knew that at this age I was, was going to have to rely on pictures? Just before his 17th birthday, unbearable pain in Matthew's back led to a cancer diagnosis. Eight months later, he was gone. We were lucky to have Matthew. 17 and a half years. We're thankful for that. Now there's one picture on the wall that brings this family peace. I love that picture. Matthew in the arms of Jesus Christ. He's in heaven. As members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Peters hold to the faith they'll see their son again. It's a short-term deal. Everybody's going to die. Everybody's going to leave. But with the knowledge of life after this death, the temple helps bring that. The Peters believe what happens in temples makes it possible for their family to be reunited in the next life. They tell me it made the tragedy of losing Matthew bearable. That is what kept us together. 
is the church and the temple and knowing that we'll be together again after this life. The Peters family believes they'll feel that same peace when they eventually tour the temple as well. Now, a lot of people have asked if there will be pressure to join on one of these tours, and they stress to us this is not to recruit, simply to inform. Dan, really to demystify, I think, for a lot of people what the church really means. And, of course, many people touring will be people of other faiths. And we were actually able to talk to two faith leaders about what the temple opening nearby really means to them. It's a sacred space. It's very important. It's extremely, extremely important for uh, people have inspirational things. I see us continue to work together to build up a, a, a community. Father Will Schmidt is pastor at St. Mary Magdalene, just a mile north of the New Temple. He says that while the two religions have different beliefs, they share common family values. And seeing the temple go up is motivating their own desire to build. When I look out and I, I see the temple, it's just a reminder of, well, we want to build a temple for the Lord in our faith. The next temple to open in our state is in North Phoenix, near Pinnacle Peak and 51st Avenue. No official opening date, but construction's been about a year behind Gilbert. The church announced the two temples at the same time, but construction in Phoenix was delayed after some neighbors protested due to the height, lighting, and traffic concerns. The church redesigned the building, changed the color, and agreed to turn off the lights earlier in an effort to make peace with the neighbors. A sixth Arizona temple in Tucson is in the planning and approval stages. We're told those newer temples won't host holiday light displays like Mesa has done for 34 years. Singing, acting, and fire dances? Kids will call me on the phone and say, I danced the fire dance last night. Why there's so much excitement building for 12,000 East Valley kids when the Gilbert Temple, a rare look inside, continues.